In today's abandoned video, we are showcasing a rural abandoned hospital that we visited two years ago on a week-long trip to Ireland. The building, established in the 1930s, was formerly an Irish mother and baby home where women who fell pregnant outside of marriage could live to fit in with the country's religious exceptions. In these structures, reports of dark ongoings came to light in the last two decades, addressing that some of what occurred in their interiors was horrific. Join us as we explore the building and watch as our adventure doesn't end up going to plan. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Hi guys, Alistair here to make a slight request for help. We don't usually do this at all, but after checking with the others, we decided that this wasn't too sneaky. Basically, I'm in my final year of university and I'm working on my final film project titled Encore. Gauging actors, equipment, travel, locations is very expensive. So I thought I could promote our GoFundMe page for the film on the Abandoned channel, just in case anyone fancied helping out. Naturally, it wouldn't be for nothing. You would get access to the film and credited at the end when it's completed in summer, and you would also receive links to free exclusive Patreon videos that are private on our channel that no one else would get the chance to see, for a minimum donation of £5. There's uh, more rewards for larger donations, and I'll leave a link in the description as to not make this a bit too long with all of that information in. Uh, so yeah, donate if you'd like, and um, everyone would be extremely grateful, including me. And uh, if you don't fancy donating, just move past this bit, no problem. Thank you for listening, and enjoy today's video. After camping in the thick woodland surrounding the grounds of the hospital, at the crack of dawn we cautiously wandered towards the facility, glad to see it overgrown and silent. We were midway through our 2021 island trip in summer, so well prepared for any complications. Our first target was the site's chapel, which was becoming a regular occurrence at these premises we had visited. Thankfully it didn't take long before we found a slight gap to squeeze beyond. Ah, oh, this is stunning. It's so clean. No, neither, but it, it works in my eyes. There's hardly any decay. There's another little chapel down there. The chapel was totally frozen in time, we predict because it hadn't been vacant for as long as the main building. Still, coated in dust, with every feature remaining in an immaculate state, it was a very atmospheric experience to amble around the space. Here's the smaller chapel. See this hanging artwork on the walls, it looks to be done by children. But it's quite good. It's got a distinct style to it. Away from the large and small halls beside each other, there are a handful of back rooms, most of which were full to the brim with religious memorabilia. I think this will be a uh, storeroom for props and stuff like that. Yeah, they're normally positioned at this part of the building. It's a bit of a long shot, but I wonder if the power works. Oh, it does actually. It's really bright as well. So much stuff left in here.
no doubt this side will be any different when it comes to the power, as I thought. This one seems to have a lot of stuff as well. I really like the tags on the drawers, especially the top one anyway. The bottom ones have been reprinted, but they look quite old. Perhaps it's just the font they used there. This gives an indication as to when this place closed or perhaps close to its closure date at least. The priest's robes are still in this wardrobe as well. In the mid-1930s, the mother and baby home was established with capacity for roughly 40 women and their children. The women would be sent to the complex to work to remove the sin of pregnancy outside of marriage. Their information was wiped when they arrived at the home and were given nicknames by staff. The horrors of what actually occurred inside one of these properties began here. There are terrible stories of beatings, high infant mortality, negligence, forced labour and starvation that resulted in the deaths of hundreds of children. the main entrance. These are confession booths. And that is a body tray. What's that doing in the church? It's two in fact, but this one's lost its tray. It's a bit strange, but a cool find. And the box in appears to be a manger. To be honest, out of all the places we've been to, I'm only really surprised that this one has power. There's hardly any deterioration. This staircase is going to take us to the top of the balcony. Maybe the lights are on too. There's this organ, maybe that still works. This is definitely one of the nicest churches I've seen. The architecture is so different, but I really like it. After beginning our exploration within the chapel and covering all that resides there, we moved on to the largest structure on site that would have housed the women and their children in the early days and treated patients in the hospital's latter period of use. Four years after opening, the population of people taken in had tripled, with some women forced to sleep in a barn and more than 30 children dying. After this problem got too large to combat and the government intervened banning the facility from taking in more families, the site was finally expanded to meet the capacity it was bearing, able to host over 100 women. It didn't take long for us to come across a suitable entry point, however, we anticipated the lower level to be alarmed, so initially headed upstairs to leave that area until last. Paintings hung up. This building just consists of three really long corridors stretching the whole complex. We have empty rooms leading off. Hopefully we can find some interesting stuff. The flower bouquets are nice hanging down, although I'm pretty sure they're fake. There's no way they would have survived for this long. It's probably just bedrooms. Nice tiles and floor. There's various paintings hung up on the walls in an otherwise absent room. A 
unfortunately despite some minimal decay and dated architecture, the long corridors of the main block were stripped in comparison to the untouched chapel. All we could do was manoeuvre through and try to highlight interest. Power still works in here. But I'm in certain rooms. Oh, that's a really nice staircase. It's got the protective gate in as well. It's very art deco. In the site's concluding years, it operated as a hospital for disabled children, a similar case for many mother and baby homes in Ireland, which explains the safety netting on each staircase. It is uncertain when the complex closed for good, but judging by the deterioration, we would estimate that it had been shuttered for five or six years. It's much more decayed here. It's really nice peel and paint. Some more paintings. We're gonna go up to the top floor next because we think the bottom floor is alarmed. Um, and then we'll go down to the bottom floor at the end in case it triggers it and we have to leave quickly. Even though most of these rooms were void of furniture and belongings, it felt as if there was an entirely different feeling left in every one. Reading up on some of the terrible stories that occurred in most, if not all, of these properties, it is quite incredible to learn about some of the critical abuse of women and children, and negligence of feeding, environment, and human rights that was the reason for the absurdly high mortality rate of the infants in multiple sites. I'm obsessed with these floor tiles. So many bathrooms in this place, so you see them a lot. There's a natural bath. Some mouldy something near the plug. There's another nice staircase. It's also got that safety covering that the other one had. The colour scheme in here is grey. Yeah, it makes it worth it because it's so empty that it has a variety of colours. The corridors are just so nice. Seems much more decayed here. Closure had been discussed for decades, ironically just due to declining numbers, but only happened in the 1970s after nearly 40 years of function in the buildings. Over the next decade, many of the mother and baby homes located in towns across the country would change occupancy. Oh, there's interesting decorations in here. This must have been a bedroom for someone who liked music, that's the only thing I can think of. Unless it was like a music room in the hospital. See, I'm convinced this was some sort of locked cell, but in a, a nicer fashion by the breathing holes on the glass. And there's a long row of them. Probably just monitoring holes actually, so the uh, hospital worker could keep an eye on the patient without coming in. After making tracks throughout the upper floors of the hospital, it was finally time to head downstairs, expecting to trigger a sensor at some point, but hoping that we would sight some equipment of some sort being stored there. Our plan was to shuffle carefully through the hallway, and see how far we could get before the dreaded moment of the wailing alarm. We look, I, I couldn't, oh, I couldn't see one. Slide down the stairs. 
<laughs> Is it going for a half already? The corridor on the lower floor appeared very clean, with its fire escape lights all working. Sadly, as we found out, a lot of the wards had been locked, and we could only glimpse the beds and medical equipment that did remain through dirty glass. Disappointed, but surprised we could still hear each other talk, we continued along, checking each room until... Here's some beds. We're gonna have to be quick here, the footage isn't gonna be the best, but... It's so loud. Locked all the bedrooms. Yeah. Tiles are really nice. This is dining room. Some plates left still. And this will take you into the kitchen. In 2018, hundreds of babies were discovered beneath the land of a mother and baby home in Ireland that caused a huge government investigation into 18 of the properties where this eerie information came to light. The findings detailed decades of damage, including forced adoptions to the USA in exchange for money, that shocked the country. Today, the statistics are available that up to 250 children and 10 women are reported to have died at this very site, which supposedly is a very low number contrasted to others, where the total sits above a thousand. In 2021, with all of this public knowledge, the group that ran this and two more mother and baby homes acknowledged the horrific actions that had occurred in their ownership with an apology. We will link some text pieces about the case below if you want to read more. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned hospital. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page below where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We hope you found interest in a much more darker video than usual. See you next time.